Sure, so my name is Chris Sigety. I'm the executive producer of Heroes of the Storm. And I'm Alan DeBerry, I'm technical director on Heroes of the Storm. With the launch of Heroes, it made for an interesting challenge, I feel, being that it's a free-to-play game that was already in an open beta. To launch, uh, it's an interesting sort of challenge to have to build hype for something that's already pretty widely available. So how did you guys tackle that exactly, and how do you think it's going so far? Uh, that was a challenge for us, you know. I think you've got a pretty large base of people who had played through closed beta into open beta, and really the launch is geared towards letting the rest of the world know that the game is here. It's arrived in our sort of preliminary vision, um, and that's been tough because I think walking back and forth between the really um, hungry existing players who are like, yeah, yeah, we know about this, let's get on, what's the next thing? Um, and walking the line and then describing to the people who have been sort of waiting until you're done with beta to come in has been the challenge with it. So it's going great. I mean, we're getting a, a very positive response, but as far as um, how, you know, how do you even say that message, it's difficult. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> <That's basically right. laughs> yeah. Do you feel like you're getting a lot of new people in then? Because uh, you definitely get the response from the people that have already been super involved. They're like, yeah, we're already here. But uh, do you feel like you're bringing in a lot of those new people? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're seeing it. I mean, the, we're we're seeing daily reports basically, and it really didn't even start till now. So already we're seeing a lot a lot more awareness. The thing is, really up until even open beta, although it may seem to the gaming community like they've known about Heroes of the Storm for a while, it's not widely known. We've uh, had various surveys run in in, in all, basically all regions um, to the awareness of Heroes and, and people just don't necessarily know about it. Unless you're playing it, unless you signed up for the beta and you were a super highly engaged player, you didn't necessarily knew, know it was there or that was coming. So this is that opportunity to say, it's here, it's real, it's a, it's a real game, it's Blizzard's next big thing. Um, and, and the, you know, the, we're off to the races now. Yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So it's about getting it really out there for a lot of those other people. Right, awesome. exactly. Oh, I'm good to hear it. It's good to hear it's going well then. Yeah. Uh, so what were the target goals then that said to you guys that Heroes was a product that was ready to launch? What did you have to meet? Yeah, there are several things. I think that it's been an evolution, so it, it's hitting the tone. It's uh, making sure it, it was the game and the vision that we had in mind. And, and Heroes has a sort of expect the unexpected tone that we've been trying to establish. And there was having enough content, and then there are a lot of features that Alan and his team worked on that we wanted to have ready too for, for launch. So. Um, really with the seven battlegrounds that we had gotten ready that sort of send that message of expect, expect the unexpected along with the hero roster that we had. And then there were several different features that needed to come together and be there and that was sort of it. And I was, this is, this is the vision. This is the, um, this is the starting point of heroes and we're ready to stand behind it and say it's ready for all of you to participate worldwide. And I think that's a, that's an important aspect of it, which is while we're now saying, okay, this is the base vision, this is the base game, and we're ready to launch, um, this is not the end. Like, this is just the beginning. And now we have so much more planned going forward. So while we've got the, you know, the core maps, the battlegrounds, we've got the heroes, we've got even the features that we thought we needed to have, like just basic things like various ranked mode and matchmaking and profiles and progression systems, now there's let's build on that, let's iterate on that, let's keep adding more content, more features, and really just keep on growing. Heroes is a, is a game that's in it for the long haul. We have a team that we're still hiring into right now and growing because of our ambitions around this. So um, yeah, this really does just mark the beginning. Okay, so let's, do you guys have like an idea of your overall mode map moving forward then? Like every X amount of time you want to release this thing or you want the game to look like this in six months? What does that look like for you guys? Yeah, it's, it's not exactly that precise. I mean, um, we didn't sit around and say it's 2.3 weeks of time or whatever that, that <laughs> content has to come out. Um, but we did take sort of a, a, a rest. It wasn't a rest as much as it was a focus on the polish of the game and a lot of the systems that were related and slowed down on content in the last two releases that you saw. We released our last two battlegrounds and our hero rate was about six, seven weeks at that point. That's You're going to see that dramatically increase right here. Um, we're getting up to the three to four week timeline now. We see content dropping all the time. Behind the scenes on the team, we've gone through massive amounts of change to establish the ability to drop content even at the rate we're at. But we're still not happy with it. There's a lot more we want to be able to do on an even a quicker pace than that. Um, but so so you'll see an increase in pace. But we're not like it's always three weeks. We'll do this thing or four weeks. 
we're going to do that for the next several months. Um, after that, we'll, we'll play it by ear. But lots of exciting things. Um, generally around Heroes and Battlegrounds for the, for the next few months, but lots of things that as we head towards BlizzCon and beyond, you'll, you'll hear that go, I think, a lot more uh, into new territory. Some potentially longer announcements around the BlizzCon time frame then? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's about as far as I can go without getting too much of it. So well, was there anything with the launch that you feel like you really wanted to be in there for launch, but just for whatever reason it wasn't able to be put in there? Especially like in terms of like UI or anything like that, features? Well, there's definitely just looking at the list of all the things that we want to do, you could say, well, yeah, it'd be all great if we could have all of this <laughs> in there. And really, if we look at our wish list of things, it's, it's never ending, just like the hero list and the battleground list, all these things just go on forever. So. I think um, what we're ultimately delivering here as an initial vision, I think it encompasses a lot of what we wanted to do. I think there's still improvements we can make here. And in fact, we've already been talking about some of those things, just like um, on the rank system, there's improvements we want to make. And we just actually released a blog post recently that kind of described some of those improvements. So there's, there's clearly things that we want to keep on iterating on, we want to keep on improving. And that's kind of the key thing here, which is, again, we're launching this game, we've got this initial vision, but that doesn't mean we're done. We're going to keep on making things better. Um, another thing is we'll, kind of another area that we'll keep on focusing on is matchmaking. We want to keep optimizing that matchmaking and making it so that you have better matches. Um, obviously, just from a content perspective, we also want to keep on adding heroes from all the different game worlds so that we have a nice representation across uh, that cover different roles, that cover different game worlds, you know, um, just to make sure that everything's kind of covered. So there's a lot of things that ultimately we would love to get in and we're going to get in. It's just a matter of continuing to deliver that over time and keep adding new stuff. Okay. To follow on to that question then, what is, from both your personal perspective, the top player issue at the moment that you'd like to address? Like, what, the, the one thing you could fix today, what would that be each? Well, one of the features, I was going to add it to that too, that I, I really think is going to be an important one and we're trying to figure out when we can ninja it in and get it there, is clans and clans groups effectively. Um, because we feel like one of the most fun ways to play heroes is to play with your friends. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be your best friends or the people who are on your sacred Battle.net friends list. Um, it, could, it can just be a group of like-minded people and we think clans and groups are a way that we'll be able to really speak to that. Um, so I think if I could snap my fingers and have it and Helen's team who wasn't under duress <laughs> and constantly already dealing with so much stuff um, could do it, we would have that in, you know, next Wednesday or <laughs> whatever. Uh, but I have high hopes for that. It's still a ways off. Uh, but that is that is one of the features that I would love to, to see sooner rather than later. On your end, Alan? Um, I mean, obviously, that's a great example. There's a lot of other social features that we'd like to keep on adding. Um, we think it's just a great way to find people to play with. Uh, the ranked stuff that I talked about, I think, is important. The, the ranked play feature we have right now, I think it's a good start. I don't know that it's the ultimate vision of what we want, and so we're going to keep iterating on that. We want to add in seasons as well. We want to add in kind of a Grandmaster equivalent rank to really capture that top end uh, experience. So um, there's, there's a lot of things that we want to just keep on adding. Okay, awesome. I'm glad you said clans too, because that's actually something that's pretty pretty relevant to my interests. Yeah, the exactly. The clans is just very restrictive. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, also the type of player you are, right? And clans can really solve that. You may be, yeah. look, I'm not into the hyper competitive scene. I don't want to. I don't even care about that. I just want to have a good time, and I want a large group of people that I can go to and see somebody like minded on and know know that they're kind of safe along the lines of. of Plans in World of Warcraft, you know, or guilds rather in World of Warcraft. So um, that was a big deal, and we think it can be a big deal in Heroes as well. Okay. If there was anything you had to, well, if we went back in time a bit and you were going to like redo the launch process leading up to launch, a couple months leading up to launch, is there anything you'd kind of reorder to make sure that it was that it was there? Anything you change for that? No, I mean the stuff that I think about are just sort of process-related things, changes we would have made to how we. Um, function in, ge in general, and um, it's been it's been tough. We went from a team that's really derived from StarCraft to uh, ships a, a product and then follows up with an expansion in a year and a half or two years instead of this constant content um, delivery that we have with Heroes now. And so there's so many challenges to overcome that around process, around tooling, around um, how the game is even 
stored the data structure of the game and all of these things. And so um, I, I don't know if it would have been solved in the last two months, but the more the better we are with those things, the more effective we can be in the future. And so um, we're going to be releasing at this increased pace, but it's it's going to take a lot of work to do that. So the more we're ahead of that, the, the better it is for us. It sounds like if you have the awareness of that now, though, then moving forward, that's something you yeah, need to do more. It, the, the challenge with it, though, is, is there's so many features you want to add to the game, and those things directly compete with changing the process to make it easier to deliver the content that you want to deliver. And so this team, which has grown and we're still growing, has to constantly fight this battle of optimize the process or tools, really, and, and the, the, make more sophisticated our ability to deliver this content, create it, deliver it, um, or add this clamps or th this other feature, and they're, they're a lot of the same folks. And so that's, that's where the real dilemma lies for us as we move forward. Okay. Is, with this sort of changing pace of rollout and changing process, is there anything you guys are looking to change with the communication process with the community? Uh, how you're rolling these things up? Uh, well, for sure. I, I feel like we have done a lot of changes already, for us at least. Um, we didn't tend to communicate as much with the community in our past games. Even, uh, even though we've always listened and we have interacted with the community and we value it, we obviously have a BlizzCon where the whole point is to sit and celebrate with our, their fans. Um, we really wanted to get better at it and, and create a constant dialogue with the community. So we made changes like embedding community um, into development. They are part of the development team now and they sit with us and they are learning much more about um, what's happening in the game, can speak much more on a constant basis on Reddit and our forums, et cetera, about what's going on, why, why we're doing what we're doing, what, it, what is coming. Um, obviously, everybody wants to know every plan we have, and there's still some level of surprise we want to have and, and all that, so we're not completely you know, um, opening up our, our rope, so to speak, but um, we are, we're trying to be more out there than we've been in the past. Yep. <laughs> that was uh, an excellent metaphor. <laughs> I was talking about wizard robes and I wanted to see that. Ah, okay, you know, okay. Not a bar for an excellent metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. Please. I <laughs> would not want to see that, trust me. <laughs> uh, so, um, another, on the more technical end of the spectrum for you, Alan, another topic I see brought up pretty often, so you talked about matchmaking quite a bit already, uh, is the match rejoin feature. How do you feel it's performing currently, and are there any planned changes for that? Yeah, so that's been one that we're continuing to work on, actually. We made a bunch of improvements recently where we will um, essentially allow you to get back into a match quicker um, as long as uh, certain circumstances hasn't, haven't been hit. Um, but there's still improvements we can make there. We know from a speed perspective, getting you back in from a kind of UI perspective of explaining what's going on. Um, these are all things. And then just purely from a reliability perspective as well. So. Um, I don't think we're done there. I think there's still more work to do, and in fact, we have people actively working on it. But we've actually made a lot of improvements recently. Um, earlier on, I think we were in much uh, kind of shakier state there, but we've made a lot of improvements recently, and, and we'll keep on doing it. Just like just like we've said before, like we're not we're not done with with any of these features. Really, we're we're going to keep on improving them. We're going to keep on uh, evolving them and making them better for players. So um, we'll keep sticking to that. What would you like to see the match rejoin feature look like when it's Done. I think the most important thing right now is players don't care about how it works and all this stuff. They just want to get back into a game quickly, right? And they want it to work reliably. And so those are the two factors that we just need to optimize against. We need to make sure that it's quick and it's reliable. And that's pretty much it. So there's not a lot of uh, crazy features or this or that. It's purely just get me back in that game. Look, something happened. My internet dropped. I don't know what it might have been. Um, we just need to get you back in. So we've got a system right now that works and you can get back in. It, it, but there's times when maybe it takes a little bit longer than it should, and so we just need to improve that. Yeah, I think most people would be satisfied with a match rejoin feature that just gets them in pretty much installed. That's pretty much it. <laughs> That's the ideal goal, isn't now, it? Now, having said that, it sounds like, well, it's just, let's just do it. The problem is on the back end, technically, there's a lot of challenges there, and so that's what we keep on working on. So it's not as simple as just, oh, let's just flip the switch and make it work, but there's actually work that has to happen for that system to, to operate properly. Understandable. <laughs> So I, I recently tried to load some replays because I had a pretty sick match that I wanted to go back and look over. Yeah. But uh, I couldn't load any replays. Apparently this is uh, something an issue a lot of people have ignore that the replay system in general is not entirely up to par. How do you guys feel so it's, it's not that it's not up to par, it's that if right now we, when we patch, we don't support old replays. Ah. So within a given patch, the replays will work. 
But lately, speaking to what Chris was talking about earlier, we've kind of picked up our cadence in what we're releasing patches. So just over the last couple of weeks, we've released like two or three updates, basically hot fixes. And unfortunately, because of the system, the, how, it, how it is today, anytime we do one of these client updates, these client hot fixes, your old replays are going to stop working. Yeah. So this is something that actually we've fully supported previously in StarCraft. In fact, you can go and watch old replays just fine. Um, so far in Heroes, we actually haven't hooked up the aspect that allows you to watch the old replays yet. So this is something we're working on though, and so it's going to come. It's just we haven't actually delivered on that yet. We're kind of working on wrapping it up with a bunch of other improvements related to replays and esports and kind of bringing that in one big thing when we can say, look, we now officially support old replays. But right now, it's not something that we officially support. So whenever we patch, your old replays are going to stop working right now. So I can hold on to that sweet Sylvanas replay in the hopes of watching it in the future, maybe? So that's a question, whether actually the old replays will work or whether when we finally deliver it, it's going from forward. Now. Yeah. So probably right now the idea is that from going forward, they would work. So yeah. but it's something we're working on. <laughs> I'll start practicing the one. Yeah, yeah, perhaps mm -hmm. mm -hmm. immediately when you have that amazing place, <laughs> you can cut it up. But we, know, but we know it's something that people want, it, so we're, we're working on it for sure. So uh, is there any plans for further UI customization options, especially in terms of flipping the UI or actually resizing it? Um, it's something we've talked about. Um, so purely from a player perspective, ideally we'd love it if we could deliver an experience that kind of tries to meet as much of the requirements that players have, just so you don't really have to go and fumble with a bunch of controls to try to make it optimal. Um, having said that, we do have uh, UI controls, like we've done this back in StarCraft as well, where you could turn off pieces of UI, like in the uh, control group selections for in StarCraft, there's the ability to turn that off because players found that they would click on it accidentally. So there's the option that we could totally do that for Heroes as well. We could make it so that you can uh, flip the sides of the minimap or anything like that that players might want. Um, right now, like here, actually here's a great example of that. We just released um, a, a first pass at making it so that a lot of players had commented that when they're like fleeing and they're right clicking on the yes. on the world, you know, they're going to right click <laughs> on the mini map, and as a result, they start going the other direction, right into the enemy. So many times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the in one of the recent patches we just released, where we can you can turn that off now, and so the right click will basically go through the mini map. That's an example of an option, and, and actually we'd like to make even more improvements there where maybe we can add, there's a, a modifier key that would allow you to actually click on the right click on the minimap when you hold down the modifier key. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So that's an example of UI enhancements that absolutely, like we're, we're not, again I keep on stating the same thing over and over again, but we're not like, we're not done, you know, there's always going to be improvements that we can keep on rolling out. And so um, definitely things like uh, maybe flipping the side of the minimap or other kinds of UI controls, there's things that we can, we can add in future patches. and. Historically, we've done it in all of our games. We keep on adding more stuff like that. Awesome stuff. That's good to hear. I especially like the name of stuff. I've died many times for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the first yeah. that is in the game right now. Yeah, I turned it on, and I, I've had the problem happen a few times, and now I've just learned. It. So I lost a lot of things I didn't realize I did, too. So I immediately turned it back off. So yeah. try it. We'll see what happens. Yeah, especially if you bring forwards a modifier that you can click on. Yeah, I think that's the best to. of both worlds yeah. because then you can, you know, you can do it when you want to and not do it when you don't want to. That'd be perfect. Yeah. That'd be perfect. So here's a few quick questions from the community regarding further UI changes. Okay. Uh, any plans to bring back on-screen buffs? So yes, the answer is yes. Um, really, the exist the buff system that was there before those little circles in the corner. This is kind of like was in an early state. It's it wasn't the final plan. We've actually made a whole bunch of improvements when we removed those, where we brought them up to the status bar that's above each hero's head. So when you get stunned or slowed or silenced, you immediately see that right in the middle of the screen, rather than having to look down in the corner there. When we did that, I think there was some collateral damage there, where we lost some things that we might not have reflected elsewhere in the screen. So um, the guys fully understand that, and we're slowly bringing those back right now. In fact. The, the next update brings back some of the stuff that we've already, um, that the community's already kind of um, talked to us about. I think one of them was the, um, the moon wells, the cool down on the moon wells. A lot of people were a little bit upset that those went away. So those are coming back. The other thing is a lot of those buff indicators, we really intended them to be part of what we call hero specific UI. They weren't supposed to be meant as just this generic UI down in the corner, but almost like the way you see on Thrall, where there's a built-in indicator uh, right above his portrait and his health bar, we want to do that for more of the heroes. So when, like, let's say, like the soul stones for Diablo, we want to build that into the UI a little better, make it a little nicer, larger, 
uh, more visible. And so um, that's something that we're going to be bringing back for different heroes. And then for the more generic things, we're going to come up with a different solution. That's a stronger theming for the heroes as well. Which yes, is. exactly. You feel more like, oh yeah, that's his mechanic. It's not just this little circle in the corner that you know has a tiny icon you can barely see. Mm, perfect. Yeah. So uh, what's the status of uh, death recaps currently? It is something also on the list. We, we actually had it in the game very early on, in the, uh, even before the technical alpha. It didn't really accomplish what we wanted. We really wanted, if it comes up, we want to like explain what happened. Like we've all had those times when like you just get burned down and just wrecked and you're like, well, I don't know, I don't know what the hell just killed me. Like, why did I die? And we want to try to explain that in a way that is meaningful to you so that you can go, okay, next time I'm going to do this or I'm not going to put myself in that situation. And so what we had initially in the game, it just, it wasn't I, really hitting what we wanted. So we pulled it back, we put it back in the shop. It's going to come back just a matter of when and when we can fit it in. But we know it's something that's desired and we're going to keep working on it. Also Plans or death recap? Which yeah. one do you want? You <laughs> I think I'd actually like death recap more. I always, I love that information. It's a great learning Yeah, tool. definitely. Yeah. Um, here's, here's another one, which is actually a top priority for some okay. certain people that were asking. Is the in-game clock on the cards having a UI clock? <laughs> We've actually stopped all other work <laughs> until we get the clock back. And no, it's funny. Like every game since I forgot what the first game. Maybe WoW had it first, but Star Two also had that where the clock was always up in the in the menus. And anytime we've tried to remove that clock, people get you know crazy like, about it. Like, what, why did you remove the clock? Um, yeah, I was actually just talking to some of the UI guys recently, and and they were saying, yeah, we're we're thinking about trying to find a place that we can put the clock back in. So. I think it's being discussed. I don't want to promise anything, but yes, I know that is a critical <laughs> uh, feature in the game, and we're trying to get it back. <laughs> it's like I think it's a feature a lot of us don't actually want, but we know it should be there because we kind of need to be reminded that we should be in bed like four hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're working on it. Good stuff. Um, here's another one. Like, uh, uh, what are you guys thinking about AFK players in matches? Like having a kick for them if they time out after a certain amount of time. Or so we actually have that. Um, so that's maybe one area that we need to improve, which is explaining that a little better. Okay. Um, we actually already have a system in the game right now where if a player doesn't meaningfully contribute to the game, it's not just purely if they're moving around. If they're moving around, that's not good enough. They need to be actually either, you know, earning XP, doing damage, healing something that can help your team. If they don't do any of those things for a set amount of time, they'll get a warning. And that warning will tell them, look, if you don't actively you know, play this game, we're going to kick you out. And then eventually they'll be booted out of the game. And um, if they get kicked out of the game and they're not there when the game ends, um, they're considered a lever and there's actual punishments in that order, in addition to simply not getting any of the benefits of that game, like the XP and gold and everything. So, Having said that, um, just the fact that you asked that question and the community asked that question means that we're not doing a great job of exposing that. Um, so we need to improve that. And the other thing is we actually want to make it better too because there's still things that um, people can do. While they may not be AFKing, they may do other things that are not contributing to the game. So we want to keep on kind of evolving that system and make it a, a little better. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. I, I didn't even know it was there and a lot of people have asked it. So. Yeah, no, it's absolutely in the game right now. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. So, something I need to it, actually went, it actually was greatly enhanced in just the last update. There's been, we keep on kind of making improvements to it, but I, I think there's more to improve still. Okay. It might be a bit of a time delay for these sorts of things to yeah. really kick in. I think probably the other thing from, a, from an understanding perspective is that when the player actually leaves the other player, it'll just look like they left the game, and that's something we need to improve. We probably need to say this person has been removed for inactivity right. so yeah. that it's clear to you as the other player is like, oh, okay. They're actually they're doing something about this. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Totally. Awesome. So is there any final message you guys would like to share with my viewers just about the launch or about your plans for heroes in the future? Yeah, totally. We're super excited. Thank you for joining us at, at launch. Um, heroes has arrived, you know, this core vision. Um, we, we really wanted to hit this tone of expect the unexpected. The variety of battlegrounds, the different heroes that, that are there, uh, the different features we feel like it's there. It set the tone for the the beginning and only just the beginning of Heroes. So um, thanks for those of you who have been participating in the beta, closed and open, um, and welcome all the new players that are going to come on board and, and realize Heroes of the Storm has officially arrived. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate your time. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Cheers.